What's going on guys, my name is Renegade, today we're here for my full guide and review of Doom Knight class. Now I've been told these videos are too in-depth for uh, for a game as simple as AQW, so I'll be uh, I'll be keeping this one a bit shorter than usual. However, if you miss the uh, the depth that I add to to the discussion, then by all means let me know in the comment section down below. So first of all, we'll talk about how to obtain Doom Knight very briefly. Um, Doom Knight class is, lit, is member only, so you're going to need to have membership, and you'll also need rank 10 warrior, rank 10 healer, rank 5 evil, and uh, 10,000 gold. You'll go to slash join Shadowfall, talk to the Doom Knight vendor there, and uh, he'll sell you the class for 10,000 gold as long as you meet those requirements I listed. Now, the class itself, I recommend using full luck enhancements and using a stable weapon. Um, unstable weapons are fine as well, I'll get into that in just, in just a sec after I talk about enhancements. Um, for the enhancements, I was talking to some people and they recommended that I go in uh, fighter, so I, I talked to other people and they recommend I use wizard, and then from my own testing it seems luck is the best? I don't know, it's weird. Um, I, I did in-depth testing anyway, um, and I found that yes, luck definitely is the best enhancement to use. Uh, fighter and wizard were both significantly lower in terms of DPS than, uh, than, than luck. I have a graph on screen that you guys can look at if you want to display the DPS. Now, I also have a graph displaying the weapon range of the abilities and, and their DPS that they gave. It's a bit misleading because the bars have been have been uh, shortened to to the length of uh, well, the, the the damages given on the y-axis there, but uh, it's it's misleading. The da the differences aren't anywhere near as big as that graph might suggest. Um, it's 1,163 on mid stable. 1,146 on stable and 1,035 on unstable. So you just want to be using either stable or mid stable. Both of those are, are really similar. Um, and unstable, it's a little bit lower. So if you have like your favorite weapon that's unstable, then by all means keep using it. It's not that much of a big deal. But uh, if you want to get your maximum damage output, then mid stable is the way to go. Right. So uh, from all that, we can we can safely conclude that stable weapon and uh, full luck. It's the way to go. Easy peasy. Now as for actually using the class, you have three passives that I'll talk about quickly. Uh, you deal 15% extra damage with physical attacks and you have a 15% reduction in your damage taken. Those are your rank 4 passives. Your rank 10 passives, just a and just a little, little small chance to activate a 50 times weapon damage hit, I guess. Um, it's, it's really rare, so it's not really worth considering when looking at this class, but yeah, it's, it's there. So, for using this class, um, the abilities themselves, the last two actually actually uh, make you run out of mana when you're soloing. So it's best to avoid using the last two abilities and just spam the first two. So spam 2-3-2-3 two, three, two, three over and over again on your keyboard and you'll be, you'll be absolutely okay in terms of soloing. It's really easy to use. However, if you do want to use uh, um, 4 and 5, or abilities 3 and 4, then uh, I'll, I'll explain how you can do that safely in just a sec. But we'll, we'll just go over what the abilities do first of all. Soul Steel is your first ability. It consumes 10 mana, has a 3 second cooldown. Um, it just applies an effect called Dark Wound, which is your, your DOT effect, I guess. Um, it deals That there deals 200% of your weapon damage over 8 seconds, and that stacks 5 times. In reality, that translates to about, sort of, I guess, a, a 50 as your base DOT, and then it stacks up to about 200, um, and, and, and increments of, of like 30, I think. So it's a... It's a pretty small uh, DOT, but it, I guess it just adds up and it's just a bit of extra damage. Um, that same thing, Dark Wound, um, also heals you for twice the damage dealt at maximum stacks. Um, also applies Cracked Soul, this, we're talking about Soul Steel still here, um, which increases the damage taken on the target um, by 10% for 8 seconds. And that stacks 5 times. So. And not only do you deal a bit of extra damage with the DOT, but you're also increasing the damage output of not only this this ability, but all the rest of your abilities in the class as well. Um, your next ability is called Soul Crush, and it consumes 10 mana, has a 4 second cooldown. Um, it, it applies just a bit of damage there, and that's improved by the amount of Dark Wound stacks on the target. So again, you're improving the amount of damage you do um, based on the stacks of the first ability. It also applies either Feared or Despaired. Feared reduces the target's dodge chance by 50%, and Despaired reduces their crit rate by 50%, um, and this ability always crits but can't miss. Sorry, always hits but can't crit. Um, Void Strike is your third ability, and it consumes 20 mana and has a 10 second cooldown. It's really quite simple, just is a strong attack which, de which deals weapon damage plus additional damage, increased the closer you are to death. 
Um, and you're finally your last ability is called Blood Offering. It consumes 25 mana, has a 10 second cooldown. If Dark Wound, which is the DOT ability from the well, DOT effect from the first ability, um, if Dark Wound is on the target, the caster will take additional damage per, per attack for 10 seconds, but will add some of the amount added to their next auto attack. Otherwise, applies a 3 second stun. So your last ability is actually the one you really just don't want to use. The 25 mana it consumes is really not worth it. Um, it's the amount of damage it increases is also not worth it either. It's really not not worthwhile to be using. However, uh, another way I found to use this class, which I think does do extra DPS, does actually increase your overall damage output, is to let your health diminish to about 500. Keep in mind this only works on monsters like the Doom Overlord you see in the background now that doesn't really do much damage. Um, let your health diminish down and then use ability number one, which is your heal, and then ability number three, which is your damage output, like that damage is based on how low your health is. That little combo you can do there, you can you can sort of just go heal, then damage, and then wait a bit, wait for your health to go back down of like 500, then damage, then heal, then uh, you just sort of have to balance it out, but it works out really good. As you can see in the background, I'm getting like 14k crits, so it actually does do quite a bit of damage. Still nothing really, really good, but it's it's like, it's a, it's a bit higher than your overall damage output if you were just ignoring ability number three. But yeah, otherwise, if you're fighting a monster that's got a lot of damage output, then I just recommend spamming abilities one and two. Like I said, ability three only really works if you can manage to keep yourself at a stable low health. Um, and if you can't, then ability three deals really low damage. It's not worth your time at all, considering it consumes quite a bit of mana. Um, and like I said, ability four, really not worth using at all. It, it sort of makes this class, I guess, a kind of a bit unique, actually, when you look, when you think about it. Because you can get yourself into a situation where you're kind of like balancing out your health a bit, I actually found myself having a little bit of fun there. You can probably see in the gameplay, um, I sort of went from soloing, normally spamming abilities one and two over and over again, and then I sort of just got into a groove of like dropping my health real low and then uh, hitting a bit hard and then dropping my health real low and hitting real hard. Now, this doesn't amount to a really high DPS overall. This doesn't really change the overall DPS that much, but I'm sure you guys can appreciate how fun it is to just crit really hard. This class isn't particularly good as a soloing class. It's quite quite bad in fact. It's it's really not that good. Its DPS is a thousand one hundred runabout, um, and it's that that doesn't really compare very much uh, very well to classes like Arch Paladin and Stone Crusher and stuff. Especially considering that in my recent class comparisons videos I've done. Um, my DPS numbers were taken on level 65, and my, my current character, and the numbers I used in this video, it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm level 85, so like, the numbers are even more different than you'd, than you'd initially think. But still, it's a little bit unique. It's a pretty boring class, it's pretty bad, but I mean, it's a little bit unique, and I appreciate it for that fact. There are far too many classes in AQW that just sort of seem like rehashes, or perhaps just small incremental changes over the previous class that was released, and so I, I do appreciate a class like Doom Knight um, that does do something a little bit unique. Um, either way though, guys, I hope you guys did find this video helpful. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.